Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breast Cancer Physio. I'm your host, Jen McKenzie, lymphedema physiotherapist and ESSA accredited exercise physiologist. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a small topic, but one that's really important if you're at risk of lymphedema. So if you've been through breast cancer and you've had lymph nodes removed, then this video is definitely for you because one of the most important jobs that you can do on a daily basis is to moisturize your arm. And I'm going to explain why in this video that job is so important. One of the things I love to do with my patients is empower them through education. I don't feel it's good enough for us to just tell you what you should be doing without any explanation. I think that patients are going to be way more compliant with the things that they're meant to be doing for themselves that can help reduce their risk of side effects and recurrence of breast cancer. But they're probably going to do it a lot more if they actually know why they're doing that job. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Why should I moisturize my arm after breast cancer treatment? If you enjoy this content and you would like to see more, then please subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Just click that big red button down below the video that says subscribe. Give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the section below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this video and ask any questions in relation to why I should moisturize my arm in the section below. So without any further delay, let's get into this video. Why should I moisturize my arm after breast cancer treatment? So firstly, let's talk about the fact that uh, generally speaking, when you've been diagnosed with breast cancer uh, and you get treated for breast cancer, you will usually go into surgery where they will at least remove one lymph node, which they usually call the sentinel node. Um, and commonly people will have a lot of lymph nodes removed, so more than one lymph node which is called an auxiliary lymph node clearance. So when you have lymph nodes removed, this is why we have to moisturize the arm and I'll explain why. So your lymphatics are part of your immune system. So when you remove lymph nodes from your armpit, you are compromising the immunity of the skin on the arm that has had the lymph nodes removed. So we're not talking about the other arm uh, that hasn't had any lymph nodes removed. We're not talking about any other part of skin on your body. We're specifically talking about the skin on the arm where on the side that lymph nodes have been taken from. So uh, just a note where um, patients may have had lymph nodes removed from both armpits. So if you've had breast cancer found on both sides, you may have had a central node removed on one side. You might have had an auxiliary lymph node clearance on both sides. So if you've had any lymph nodes removed from either armpit, um, it's the skin on the arms that we're discussing in this video today. So what is the big deal here? We're telling patients as lymphedema therapists to moisturize the skin of that arm because we want to try to prevent one thing and that's skin breakdown. Now, the reason we want to prevent skin breakdown is because of this higher risk of infection because of the fact that the lymph nodes that have been removed have compromised the immunity of the skin on the arm forevermore. So whenever you've had lymph nodes removed, you're at risk of lymphedema. Um, it doesn't mean you're going to get lymphedema. That's not a guarantee just because you've had lymph nodes removed. However, what is a permanent feature of lymph node removal is that the immunity on the skin of that arm is forever mildly compromised, which puts you at a high risk of, inf of skin infection on that side. So what we want to do is aim to prevent skin breakdown. Now, what is skin breakdown? Examples of skin breakdown could include cuts, grazes, a cat bite, um, anywhere an insect has penetrated the skin, like a bee sting, a spider bite, a green ant, um, times when mosquitoes and midges give you a bite, um, and then you could even fall over and take a little bit of skin off. All of those constitute skin breakdown. And the problem with that is that it allows a potential route for um, bacteria to get in under the skin. Now, what the problem with that is, is then we are putting you at risk of a condition known as cellulitis. Now, cellulitis is a broad skin infection. It presents as a pinky red, sometimes very red, broad rash um, on your skin. It's not necessarily itchy um, in the same way other rashes can be itchy, but it can cause the skin to be um, swollen, painful, um, hot. 
Uh, you may start to feel unwell. Um, you might start to feel symptoms of a fever. So if any of those symptoms do present, particularly if you've noticed any skin breakdown, actually another example of skin breakdown could be a burn. So I've had a couple of patients who've had little burns from just working in the kitchen. Um, another quick example of skin breakdown might be um, when you're gardening, you know, uh, getting cuts from sticks or rose thorns. So any skin penetration is ultimately classified as, you know, um, a way that uh, bacteria can get through that through that um, portal so uh, going back to what cellulitis is um, yeah if you present with potential symptoms of cellulitis so that is yeah a deep red pinky rash um, it usually has a border so usually you'll see it have you know if it's on your arm as an example it would have a line where it sort of stops um, but yeah it can make you feel very unwell um, within a couple of days or, or even sooner if you suspect you have cellulitis, the best thing to do is to get to your GP as soon as possible or your medical team that is looking after you during your breast cancer treatment. Um, report these symptoms. Ideally, if they suspect cellulitis, there would be progression towards putting you on prophylactic antibiotics because they would like to ideally stop the infection from getting you know, really going. Uh, and then once you're on antibiotics, hopefully they can control that cellulitis and, and settle it down pretty fast. The problem with cellulitis is that cellulitis can trigger lymphedema. So if we go through these, you know, this tiered steps of how uh, skin breakdown can trigger lymphedema, it's that you have to have lymph node removal from your armpit first and foremost, which then puts you at high risk of infection. If you get skin breakdown, which then becomes infected and then you get cellulitis, you then could potentially trigger lymphedema. Now that seems like a lot of things have got to happen before lymphedema is triggered. However, I have seen in a number of patients how fast that cascade can occur when it does happen. So this comes back to the whole purpose of this video, which is why do we get you to moisturize your arm every day if you've had lymph nodes removed? And ultimately, we are just trying to do one thing, which is reduce your risk of skin breakdown. So what we're talking about here is literally applying moisturizer to the skin of your arm once a day. We tend to advocate moisturizers that are water-based um, or low irritability of your on your skin. So I'll just quickly... Um, uh, go into which moisturizers um, are my recommendations. I always like to recommend these particular ones because you can also use them during radiation. Uh, a lot of people will ask me, well, what creams can I put on my skin while radiation is occurring? So this can be a double up for moisturizing the skin of your arm where lymph nodes have been removed, or you can use this during radiation prior to any major skin changes occurring. So Let's just go through these quickly. So we've got Sorbaline, which is a low pH water-based moisturizer. We tend to advocate the um, water-based moisturizers rather than oil-based moisturizer. Um, I like water-based moisturizers because if you think about radiation particularly, uh, what do you put on a frying pan? If you're frying an egg, you put oil. Why do you put oil there? Because oil heats up really quickly. If you're going through radiation and you're starting to get heat um, from those radiation burns, the last thing you want to do is create an even hotter surface area. So we tend to go with the water-based moisturizers for that reason. Um, another one is QV. Um, again, Sorbaline and QV are readily available at major supermarkets and chemist um, chains. So QV is the second one. And then the third one is um, Mugu. So this is the um, Replenish, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is the Udder Cream. I actually use this every day um, myself and I do love it. Um, it's a fantastic natural moisturizer. So there's no um, synthetic products in Mugu uh, products at all. Um, they also do a great um, natural deodorant if people are interested. So um, Mugu is the third example of um, moisturizers that I tend to recommend to my patients um, for, for putting on their arm. A couple of extra things I'd just like to mention about cellulitis as a condition. 
Cellulitis is definitely something we want to try to avoid if you're at risk of cellulitis um, because it can land you in hospital for a week on an intravenous strip. Um, so if, you, if it really does get going as an infection, they will tend to admit you to a hospital and uh, you will have intravenous antibiotics to control that infection spreading. So it's really ideal to um, uh, do this really simple job of moisturizing your arm once a day because uh, to prevent cellulitis is a fantastic thing. But on top of that, if you do get a bout of cellulitis, you're actually at higher risk of more bouts of cellulitis. So you're at higher risk of getting that infection again, just because of the nature of um, what happens with that infection. It can cause the tissue to um, you know, uh, thicken and, and firm up in, in certain sections. So um, it can basically put you in a position where you're at high risk of getting it again. So it's a really good thing to try to avoid. Let's just also quickly go through what a skin infection, um, like a local skin infection can actually present as. So we're talking about, you know, if you get a cut on your forearm and you suspect it's becoming infected, then what we want to do is, you know, um, obviously get to your GP straight away because that's the point where they're going to try to put you on prophylactic antibiotics most of the time, or they, they generally should be. Um, and it's not a bad conversation to have with your GP, particularly if you're finished with your, um, you know, immediate medical teams. Like if you, if you've finished working directly with your surgeon, with your oncologist, um, if you've completed your surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, and you know, you're, um, just having your GP as your first port of call, it's not a bad idea to actually talk to your GP and make sure they're conscious of the fact that you are at risk of lymphedema. So that if you did present with a, a cut that looked infected, that there'd be um, sort of a, a straightforward pathway for you both to go, right, it's probably time for prophylactic antibiotics. Now, I'll just put a little disclaimer in. Of course, I'm not um, medically trained in the sense that I can't give advice on pharmaceuticals. But generally speaking, that is the protocol for um, prevention of cellulitis uh, when someone is at risk of lymphedema. So um, as I said before, skin breakdown that looks like it's becoming infected straight to your GP and have that discussion around prophylactic antibiotics. If your GP is not sure though, please direct them to your medical team. So get them to speak directly to your surgeon, even your breast care nurse or your oncologist, because they will certainly have a really good um, you know, idea of what should be done to prevent cellulitis and then trigger um, triggering of lymphedema. So when we talk about, uh, yeah, the signs and symptoms of a cut or a graze or any type of skin breakdown becoming infected, we're talking about four main things, probably five actually. The four major things though would be redness, heat, pus or pain at the site of the skin breakdown. But then the other one, you know, would be if you're just starting to generally feel unwell, if you're feeling not great for no good reason, apart from the fact that you might have noticed some skin breakdown on your affected arm, um, that is reason enough to just jump in and see, see the doctor um, because it could be the sign of infection starting. Just a quick note to talk about how often we should apply this moisturizer. I think for practical purposes, particularly after you've completed all your major treatment, I would recommend that you just apply moisturizer to the skin of that arm once a day. If you're going through chemotherapy or radiation, you're probably going to be in the process of applying moisturizer to the radiated field of tissue multiple times a day. If you're going through chemotherapy, you're probably moisturizing everywhere because your skin can get really dry through chemotherapy as a side effect of the chemo. So um, once your immediate treatment or acute treatment is finished, so surgery, chemotherapy, radiation is complete, I would go back to moisturizing the arm once a day. People also ask me what's the best time of day to moisturize. Again, this is a little bit of a practicality one. So if it's easier for you to apply moisturizer in the morning, say before you go to work, that's not a problem. Some people find though that if, they're, if they have lymphedema and they're having to put a compression garment on over their arm, it's really tricky to get the compression sleeve on once you've just moisturized the skin. So one of my recommendations is that you actually moisturize just before you go to bed because the large majority of people with lymphedema are probably not wearing a night garment. So they're probably not gonna wear a compression sleeve to bed. 
So if you take your compression sleeve off in the evening, um, you might have a shower, have your dinner, whatever, um, and then you apply moisturizer because you're usually not going to be reapplying a sleeve until the morning. That's a good little trick to, as to when you apply moisturizer to your arm. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this content and you would like to see more, then please subscribe to my channel, give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the section below. If you have any questions around infection, cellulitis, lymphedema, or why you should moisturize your arm after breast cancer treatment, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you and find out what other topics around breast cancer you'd like more information on. I release a new video every week around topics on breast cancer, so stay tuned for next week's video. I hope you're having a great week wherever you are. I'm Jen McKenzie, the breast cancer physio. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.